Okay, so I'm back again with the whiteboard. I got a question from Derek on my last video. He was asking what type of workout is great all around exercise to do. At first, I wasn't quite sure what he was asking. So I asked him, um, was he looking for a workout or was he curious about what specific exercise he was looking for? Uh, so he said something for overall weight loss. So I'm guessing uh, some exercises and maybe a routine that's gonna help him with his weight loss. So um, we'll go over of course, things you should be looking for, once again, I'm not here to give you specific you know, exercises and say this one is exactly what you need to do for weight loss. Um, I'm going to give you guys a sample routine at the end. So something you can follow to do on your own uh, as a kickstarter for your workouts. I'll give you guys exercises you should be focusing on that will hit multiple muscle groups and things you should be looking for when you're trying to progress and when you're trying to lose fat. Before any of this stuff, you want to make sure that you're in a calorie deficit. Like I can give you a workout plan that's, you know, gonna burn 2000 calories unless you're eating in a calorie deficit or you're making sure you're in a calorie deficit with your food and your nutrition. None of this stuff is gonna work. Making sure you're in a calorie deficit is number one right and i did a video previously on that on how to calculate your calories and also what you should be looking for in terms of what to eat and also your protein intake so if you want to take a look at that video first before you look at this video it's going to help you a lot more so calories first take a look at that see where you're at with that because you're not going to be able to outwork your mouth like no matter how hard you try you could out eat uh, what you work within minutes or even within seconds if you're fast enough. Three things we're going to be focused on today is the workout enjoyable, um, tracking your progress and at the end I'm going to give you guys a sample routine um, and some exercise selection. So what exercise you should be looking for to help you with fat loss. Number one, is it enjoyable? Is it fun? And if it's not, you, it's probably not a good choice. I can, like I said, I can give you another workout that's extremely effective but if you gotta drag your ass to the gym every single day, you're not gonna go, you're not gonna do it. If you can find something that's enjoyable and fun, you're gonna be motivated, you'll be more likely to stick to the plan, and you can head to the gym more often. Make sure you find a workout that fits your goals and your needs and also your fitness level is very important. Not just picking a workout because it says it can burn 2,000 calories. If it's not enjoyable and not fun, I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just saying it's gonna be a little tougher for you to do because you're gonna have a harder time convincing yourself that you need to go to the gym okay so workout should be tough workout should be challenging but at the same time it should be fun and enjoyable where you're going to motivate yourself to go to the gym you know some days you're not going to want to go but for most days you should be wanting to go because of the end goal or because it's enjoyable and it's fun okay so the first thing you should be asking yourself is if you're tracking your progress and if you're not tracking your progress you probably should a lot of people they go to the gym they do the same thing and the same thing and the year after that the same thing they do the same thing and they don't see any change and that's the re reason why because they're not tracking their progress so make sure you're tracking your progress whether it be a notepad writing it down or if you're using excel spreadsheets um, I like to do that because I'm just more a tech person, so I like to just have paperless stuff. Okay, so what should you be tracking uh, during this process, right? Is I'll write down a couple things you should be looking at when you're tracking your progress. Uh, number one is are you going up in weight? That's the most simplest thing. Are you lifting more than what you did last time? If you bench press 95 pounds, then you go up five pounds. That it and you do 100 pounds this time or you know in two weeks that you go up five pounds it doesn't have to be every single workout but there should be some type of progression in your weight in terms of the weight you're using number two is how many reps are you doing okay here so I'm listing a couple ways you could track progress in terms of in the gym and how you should be tracking progress so the number of reps you're doing right did it increase then you go from 8 reps to 10 reps. Then you go from 10 reps to 12 reps. And then you go from, you know, 12 reps to 15 reps. Now, you may be asking me, so am I supposed to just keep going up in reps? No, it's just a way to track your progress. You don't have to keep going up in reps. You could just change one of these variables and making sure you're increasing one of these variables. Or, in this case, another one here is time, right? So rest time. Are you decreasing your rest time? Um, that's another way you guys can track progress is if you're resting for a minute 
you know, maybe bring it down to 45 seconds. All right, uh, but you know, rest time, I know for a lot of people, it's a, a little harder variable to track. Um, but for majority of people, you should be able to track your weights in the gym, what you're using, and also your reps. If you're not doing that, um, I highly recommend you to do so, and you're gonna see some progress right away just by doing that, tracking your weights and tracking your reps. Another way you guys can track your progress, I'll write it over here, is your uh, form and technique. Right? Uh, sorry for the sloppy handwriting, but your form and your technique, okay? So if you're doing all this already, right, tracking your time, uh, your rest time, tracking your reps, tracking your weight, next thing you can track is probably your form and technique. You know, your your set of 10 reps on a bench press can look really ugly the first time you do it, but then the second time you do it, the third time you do it, it looks even better and better. Um, there's more control, you're not just flinging up the weight. So a good way to track your form and technique is record yourself. Um, I recommend that as well, if you could just see how you're improving in terms of performing the exercises, that's also a way you guys can track your progress, all right? So, these are a couple ways you guys can track your progress, of course. Um, another one, type of exercise. All right, so if you're doing a harder version of that exercise, you're making progress. So here's just a couple ways you guys could track your progress. So if you're increasing your progress in the gym, you're gonna end up doing more reps, more weight. You know what that means? More calories burned, right? Um, and also, you know, more muscle building, of course, which potentially leads into more calories burned in the long run, right? So if you want to think about long lasting changes, not just think about burning off the fat, if you, if you also want to think about building muscle for long lasting results, this is what you should be focusing on. Um, because if you're not progressing in your training, and, but you're eating correctly, you can still lose weight. But if you want long term success, I recommend tracking your training as well. Okay, so this is what you guys have been waiting for, is the exercises I recommend and also the uh, routine I recommend. Okay, so when it comes to exercises and routine, it depends on how many days a week you go into the gym, right? But a lot of times, what I recommend is if you're going to the gym, it's better if you don't do just a single body part. It's only working a specific muscle group. Like, unless you're a bodybuilder um, and you're trying to compete for a competition and you need to work on a specific muscle group to make it look better, there is no need for you to do a chest day. There's no need for you to do a back day because you could get more frequency in with upper body days, lower body days, and full body days, right? So I've done an Instagram post where I kind of did a simple layout of the week. So I'll post that right here. If you train two to three times a week, you could do a upper lower body split workout you can do a push pull legs workout you can do a full body three times a week even four times a week so if you're going to the gym five to six times a week you could be focusing on you know four of those workouts being strength training like upper lower upper lower and then within those couple days you could do a cardio session um, it could be high intensity interval it could be low intensity interval so there's a lot of ways to structure this but here's just the uh, simple um, guideline to follow when it comes to training two to three times a week three to four times a week and you know whatever X amount of weeks that you're training for so the reason why I recommend like I said full body training um, either full body or upper lower is because frequency you could train more throughout the week like and let's say life comes up right let's say you have a you know a sick day let's say you have to go on a trip let's say um, an emergency came up and you couldn't accomplish one of those workouts you know you still have the rest of the week to do a full body workout up or lower right now if you're doing you know chest back shoulder arms legs you know and abs every one day of the week each specific body part if you miss one of those body parts you have to wait till the next week just to do it, right? Or you could be a week behind in terms of your schedule and your training. Okay, so that's the reason why I like full body and upper lower is because of the frequency and that's gonna help you burn more calories 
in each session. So besides from that, I think they're more efficient, more effective, um, you know, time friendly as well. If you are a short amount of time, you know, you could get a full body workout in and uh, or upper lower body in within a reasonable time as well. Okay, so here let's go over exercises you should be focusing on. So that's the routine. Now here's some of the exercises I think you guys should be focusing on. Uh, for sure is a squat, right? A hinge. So let's go over the, the main type of exercises, right? A push and a pull. Okay, this is the best way I think to look at, you know, coming up with exercise instead of me giving you, let's say a bench press or me just saying, hey, go do the, uh, the chest press machine. You know, you want to think of grouping your exercises and making sure you're doing one of each, right? Um, during your workouts, if you're doing a full body workout, right? So a squat, a squat can be a barbell squat. A squat could be a goblet squat. You know, a squat is pretty much anything where you're bending your knees and you're dropping your butt to the floor, right? So that's your squat pattern. Um, you have your hinge. So a hinge is pretty much, you want to think about deadlifts. Right, if it's not deadlifts, um, you could also think about RDLs. You could think about glute bridges. You could think about uh, hip thrusters. But uh, anything that's gonna work, the glutes, the hamstring, uh, the posterior chain, right here. So these are your leg movements, your squat, your hinge, and then you're pushing your pull. So making sure you're doing a push and pull exercise, pulling towards you. Dumbbell roll, your seated roll, lat pull downs, your pull ups, your chin ups, all those are pull exercises. So. When it comes to exercise selection, this is what you should be focusing on. If you want to hit all the muscle groups in your body during the week, I recommend doing your squat, hinge, push, pull. Okay, so let me write out a sample routine for you guys. I know that's what you guys would like to see. Um, keep in mind, this sample routine is not what everyone should be doing, but it's a good general routine that you could start off with, uh, especially for Derek who asked me this question. Um, here's a sample routine you could follow. So I'll give you two sample routines you guys can do, uh, especially Derek who asked me for a, a routine. And I know he wants a specific routine and he doesn't want me to just explain um, how to build a routine. So let me give you guys some actual advice to take away or routine to take away that you could try out. Two full body days, full body A, let's say that. That's number one, right? Full body A. So what you could do, squat, right? And that can be your uh, barbell, All right? Let's say a barbell squat. For example, you do that three sets of 10. Okay, so that could be your first exercise you do. So your second exercise could be a superset, right? 2A, 2B, right? Now you wanna think, you know, if I'm doing full body and I just did my legs, maybe I can add in some upper body stuff now, right? So. Maybe I could do dumbbell bench press. Um, and we want, we want to focus more on upper body on this workout, right? So we want to do four sets of eight reps, okay? Then you can go into doing your rows, right? It could be seated. All right, and then same thing with this, right? We want to go a little heavier but we want to go too heavy. So maybe four sets of 10 to 12, right? And that's already full body. You're hitting your upper body, you're hitting your lower body. And then at the end, for example, you could hit um, a little more leg work. So since you squatted today, uh, why don't we add in some walking lunges, right? So three walking lunges. Uh, for example, we do three sets of eight on each leg, okay? So now we pretty much got everything done in terms of painting the full body. Now let's go to number four. I'll write this here on the side. Um, now you just want to, for example, hit hit those vanity muscles, right? Let's let's get a set of biceps in. Or two, two, uh, two to three sets of biceps in. Two to three sets of triceps in, right? And then maybe add in a core work. You can add in a plank. Uh, you can add in some um, crunches. Okay, so, so work the core as well. So this is an example routine for let's say full body A. Let's do full body B now. All right. Full body B, right? If we're doing a full body workout B, full body A, we already got our squat, 
right? So remember what I said about also getting hinge, right? Your hinge movement is where you're doing your deadlifts, where you're kind of bending over and picking up stuff off the ground. So since we already did squat and full body A, why don't we focus on full body B will be our hinge. So let's say let's do a deadlift. All right, this can also be with a barbell. And since we went light on the squats, why don't we go heavier on these barbell deadlifts? Because for example, you might want to increase your strength on these deadlifts, right? So why don't we go a five by five, five sets of five. And since we already focused on, you know, a horizontal press is what I call it on workout A, which was, you know, pressing in front of you like this, right? Since we did dumbbell press in front of us, and we also did rows pulling towards us. Why don't we focus on pressing above us, right? Anything that goes above our head. So let's do some shoulder presses, shoulder dumbbell presses, and let's go, you know, lighter weight for this since we did some heavier stuff on the workout A. This can be, for example, three sets of 12, lighter weight with the uh, shoulder press. Now you've done your shoulder press, why don't we add in some pull, right? Now we want to pull down towards us, work that opposite muscle group. Let's do some pull-ups if you can. If not, let's do some pull-downs on the machine. And same thing here, uh, let's get more reps in. Let's do some volume work here. All right, three sets of 15. You want to do more upper body stuff? Sure, why not? Why don't we add in three? Why don't we add in some push-ups? Right, so some body weight stuff. And then we'll add that in with some face pose. Right, or rear delt flies. And then at the end here, right, sorry for this being a little sloppy, but hope you're following me. But at the end here, we could just, you know, add in our core work. Let's do some farmer carries. Let's just carry some stuff around the gym because that's just freaking great for your core. Okay, so this is, for example, could be a full body workout B. All right, so once you have those two workouts played out, you could kind of, you know, repeat those workouts uh, with different weights, different rep schemes, maybe different exercises. So what I recommend is keep it simple. Don't try to add in 50 different exercises into, you know, a week and try to learn all the exercises. You know, when your body is always learning new exercises, you're not, you know, progressing in that exercise. What you want to do is pick four to five exercises in terms of like main lifts. I'm talking about like your bench press, your, your barbell squat, your deadlifts, um, some type of like a uh, chin up, for example, if you're, if you can do those, maybe get into some weighted chin ups, pick a couple exercises and really master them. Like master them as it gets strong as hell in them. Try to get a lot of reps in them. Try to get really good at them. And trust me, you're gonna be burning more fat, and more calories, the whole nine yards, right? So keep it simple. Don't try to overcomplicate things. And for the workout routines, give those two a try. Um, whether you're Derek, whether you're someone else who is listening, give those two workout a try. Let me know what you think. That's it in terms of exercise routine, um, what you should do when it comes to picking a routine that helps for weight and fat loss. You know, there's, there's no specific routine out there that's gonna just magically change your body. You wanna make sure you pick a routine that's fun and enjoyable, first off. Number two, something you could track. Tracking your progress is number one when it comes to, you know, routine, exercises, training, nutrition. You should be tracking. If you're not tracking it, you're, you're kind of just, you know, spinning your wheels, going around in circles, and you're gonna be on the hamster wheel forever. Like you might see some progress, but then you got plateau, and then you continue going to the gym, being on that hamster wheel, right? So track your progress, making sure the reps are going up, make sure the weight is going up, making sure you're resting a little less if you can. Track that as well. Picking harder exercises do, and challenging yourself. That's gonna lead to fat loss. That's gonna lead to weight loss. But like I said, number one thing to focus on is your calorie deficit okay let me repeat that again calorie deficit calorie deficit okay so making sure you're in a calorie deficit with that being said hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope i answered your question derek if you have further questions 
or any of you have any other questions that you'd like me to go over on my handy dandy whiteboard comment down below i'll make sure i respond to you guys or send me a instagram dm and i'll make the video for you guys answering all your fitness questions and i'll see you guys in the next video peace